The following is a presentation of KSL Sports. First and 12. A total roundup of BYU and Utah football at the expanded Big 12 Conference. Brought to you by Macy's Grocery Stores. Your hosts are Mitch Harper and Alex Keery on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone. All right, everybody, welcome on in. It is another edition of First and 12 right here on KSL News Radio and also on the KSL Sports Zone. Simulcasting for your pleasure on a Sunday. Mitch Harper, Alex Curie. I'm Alex. He's Mitch. And uh, Mitch made the uh, long haul down to Texas to see BYU go up 21 to zero on that uh, on that Baylor team. Uh, the questions of whether or not BYU is going to be ready for this game was. Uh, uh, quickly out the window with how quick that start was for BYU. Uh, but it was a tale of two halves. BYU ends up getting the win, 34-28. That's what we're going to do. Let's break down the whole dang game, shall we? Let's get right into it. The BYU Breakdown. BYU takes down Baylor, 34-28. to And Alex, one of the best starts to a BYU game in recent memory that, that I can remember. Uh, you know, BYU jumped yeah. out of that 21-0 lead, and it was a complete performance early on where the offense, you know, just moves down the field on that opening series, and then the defense comes up with an interception. BYU was just rolling, and uh, it didn't look like there was any point that they were going to stop. And, uh, you know, the second half was a, a bit worrisome, but I, I just come away, though, feeling like, BYU is never going to make you feel like they are an elite team, but they are just good <laughs> enough to win any game in this conference, and they're physical enough to overwhelm a team in this league, and that's going to give them a chance to suddenly now being 2-0 and and winning on the road and having one of their two wins be among against one of the best teams in the league in K-State. They've got a real path and a chance to chase Arlington. It's so crazy to say that, but... I think that's in the cards that's now wild. here for this BYU team. Well, at the very least, you have to uh, consider it. You have to honor the, uh, the, the 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 record. I mean, they yes. are two and zero in conference. That's very early in the conference, uh, of course, but they're five and zero also. And now with Utah going down, uh, there is there are no other five and zero teams in the in the conference. And uh, frankly, now that I start to think about it, are there any undefeated teams left in the conference besides? Uh, Besides BYU, because UCF Iowa State. fell yesterday. Oh, I guess Iowa, Iowa State is, uh, and they have played one fewer game than BYU. So BYU's got the best has got the best record. They have the best conference record. So why not throw them in that conversation? I know that uh, there's some fans that are nervous to do it. How about Tyler Batty with his first sack of the season? Took he got his first uh, interception, of course, last week. But then he gets himself a uh, a nice sack. BYU Mitch had three sacks on the day. I think that puts them over their mark from last year on the year entirely uh, now after game five. And so uh, they are putting the pressure on quarterbacks. Or they're putting the pressure on their Jay Hill knows what he's doing, dialing up defenses. And the defense was called up uh, not just to save the day two or three times, but at the end there it was like a joke of how many times the, the defense kept having to go out there and make some plays. And how about Crew Wakely? We can't talk enough about this kid who had a sack, an interception, uh, all of it. I mean, my goodness, it was uh, top to bottom. Like I said, you had an, an insanely efficient and really beautiful first half by uh, Jake Retzlaff. And I don't know what it is that gets him into it. I don't know if it's – I've been trying to figure out if it's because – uh, you know, he feels like he needs to, you know, the, the, he wasn't coming from behind. So I don't know where some of the, of the uh, if it was just the Baylor defense sort of figuring him out in the second half, but he got into that uncomfortable space that made him make it some bad throws. And so he ended up, <laughs> he had 180 yards in the first half, ends up with 216 on the day. Uh, two touchdowns in the first half, no interceptions, zero touchdowns, two interceptions in the second half. So all of these things that people thought maybe could they, they could put to bed about the worrisome uh, Jake Retzlaff performances. You get this awesome anxiety, Cougar fans, for uh, for another week or two as they uh, go into the bye week. So, yeah, none of those questions are totally answered about uh, Jake Retzlaff, but the 5-0 and part, you can't question. It was crazy right before, I think it was two plays before his first interception, he had a pass where he just threw it away. There was nothing there, and you thought, yep. man, he has made significant he's strides. He's grown up. <laughs> he's grown up. He's, he's making the great decisions, and then that happened, and he had two interceptions. 
in the second half. Like, uh, let's just call it what it is. Jake is going to drive BYU fans crazy because he's never <laughs> going to be just flawless. He's never going yeah. to. Because even even against K-State, there were three or four passes that were wildly inaccurate a week ago. I mean, he's just going to have these moments where you go, what did I just see here? But mm-hmm. he's also going to throw some lasers and some bombs. That pass he had to Darius Lasseter, the 44-yard touchdown, Insane. that was brilliant. I mean, that yeah. was that was a – proof of what John Beck is doing with him like that that was the work like that those were that was a throw that I remember seeing from Zach Wilson from John Beck even when he was a player at BYU so Jake continues to improve but he just he's going to give you five passes that just leave you going man what just happened and you just hope and pray those five passes do not sink your chances at a win. And luckily, BYU built up such a big cushion yeah. that it was going to be tough for a Baylor team that just really has – they just don't have a soul. Like, they don't have any identity <laughs> right now. Baylor right. just seems like they're just kind of going through the motions. And I give them credit that they they had some fight, a lot more fight than I thought they would in the second half, but they just don't seem to have any sort of identity. And that's a big uh, – that's a far, far fall from once being a Big 12 champ three years ago – to now where they're just kind of wandering. And, and that stadium was lifeless until yeah. that you know late third quarter. BYU faced no heat from the crowd. The heat was I, just coming I never, from the you weather. Tell me, you tell me. I, I never know what the reality is when people post pictures and they go, look how abysmal this crowd is. I'm like, when is that taken? 25 minutes for kick? I'm not sure. Was it a sparse crowd? We certainly heard the BYU fans when BYU was up early. It, it was sparse. Uh, well, as far as – a lot of what was interesting was that there was the the fans kind of went to the shaded area, and even Utah mm. fans probably remember this when they went to Waco last year too. It was pretty hot, so people were avoiding the the spots that were just getting pelted by the sun, and they just yeah, went yeah. to the concourse with the shaded area and could still see the game. But it was a light crowd. I mean, they announced I think it was thirty nine thousand five eighty three. Mm. It was less than that. It yeah. felt more along the lines of thirty. And there just there was no energy at the place, and and when I got there, and I was there about you know two and a half hours before kick, and uh, there was just no one there around around the bill the no tailgating nothing. And I know it was an early morning kick, but there was just no pregame atmosphere and energy. So BYU just kind of walked into a stadium that was it almost felt a little bit scrimmage like at times at yeah. early on, and then and then BYU just pounced and. Look, maybe we can also – we buried the lead. They they now are no longer the vampire cougs. They're just mm. maybe the breakfast cougs now. They were oh, fantastic it. in the morning for me. Right. <laughs> well, and, yeah, so, yeah, another one for uh, ten, one for their last 11 <laughs> games uh, for, in those daytime games. Whatever. I, I throw those stats out, especially considering that we had a Utah team lose at night at home in a blackout, <laughs> like, to Good a point. freaking Arizona team. Like, honestly – uh, there were a lot of things that went weird uh, yesterday and a lot of, uh, you know, streaks broken in that sense. So l- let's not also bury a little bit of the lead, which is the injuries. What do we know about who's out? And, you know, when Connor Pay went down in that first series, it was it was not a good one to have to stretch him off and see him in a boot later with crutches on the sideline. That's that's one that feels long, long term. Yeah, th- that's the hope has got to be that he's not a season ender. Uh, but, you know, you, this could be one that, you know, maybe you hate to – you know, you know, pro- you know, forecast or or make any uh, predictions about it, but you know, it could be one that maybe you're looking at a month where uh, you're you're not seeing right. Connor pay, and that's where BYU's got a uh, you know, it their backup second string offensive line uh, did show well uh, without Connor pay. You saw Sonny Moccasini take over at center, and he emerged as BYU's backup center in the tail end of of fall camp when they just the other options that they were u- utilizing just weren't, weren't really uh you know clear cut second string centers to to warrant that spot behind Connor Pay. Moccasini right. got that nod and then Leia Usa and Bruce Mitchell. BYU didn't give up a sack the entire game yeah. and, and that was noteworthy because Baylor had eight sacks against Colorado <laughs> last week. But uh you know Connor Pay is gonna definitely be the one to monitor. Harrison Taggart was interesting because he left the field, and he was just—it was strange just to see uh, Sione Moa, the linebacker, not the running back. Right. Uh, he was in, and it, that just instantly, from an eye perspective, you're like, "Wow, that, that what's going on here? Where's Taggart?" He was just on the sideline, no helmet near him, uniform yeah. on, and, and 
you know, that's typically where you you wonder maybe is it is it for protocol deal? But again, right. you, you don't don't have any. You don't want to forecast what that exactly was. But yeah, that uh, one. I think Kalani even mentioned it in the post game was something that he. Uh, you know, he didn't anticipate that one was going to be super yeah. long. He was like, "Yeah, I think he'll get back." And it, it, it's the Connor Pay one that it, hurts the he, most just because of that. That uh, he is, he's the one to monitor. And and I talked with T.J. Woods earlier in the week uh, about Connor Pay, and and he just said like the foundation basically of this offensive line. And you lose Connor Pay for an extended period that that will test this team uh, because. We, we, you know, the next game is against Arizona, and Arizona looked dang good on their defensive front against Utah. <laughs> right. And Utah feels like they got an offensive line that's the best O line that they've had maybe in a decade. So uh, that'll be a tough test. And but the thing is, what's been impressive to me about BYU, Alex, throughout this season so far, is that they have dug into their depth, and they've had you know to turn to you know, some second, third string guys in certain spots, and they've performed. They've done enough. And, uh, you know, the running back position in particular, I mean, that group to me, you just you hope that L.J. Martin can be back for that Arizona game because you need more from the running backs. You can't have Jake Retzloff be your leading runner right. uh, the whole season. I mean, th- there was uh, the moment in the first half where Baylor committed a late hit and Ratzloff got pushed into the bench, and I thought, oh, no, here's a Cam Rising moment oh. for BYU. Baylor, Baylor, Baylor Ratz- loves that. <laughs> Baylor loves that move. That's <laughs> how they get them. <laughs> that they do. And, uh, you know, you need some running backs to emerge as the featured back. At, BYU gave Nawahine a massive workload, yeah, 19, 19 carries, carries, but it didn't result in much, only 2.7 yards per carry. Well, hey, uh, when Vanderhaar is your third leading rusher of the day, that's probably not the best stat uh, yeah. for your punter. Although that was a brilliant call. Another that was. Spe- another special teams like crack move by uh, by K Pop uh, on the week. So that was uh, that was a fun one to see. Uh, there it is. BYU gets the win though. All those things said, Mitch, BYU gets the win. They're five and zero. They're two and zero in conference play, and frankly, miles ahead of I think where a lot of fans. And now you're going to have to deal with the ire of uh, Kalani Satake during the week, Mitch, <laughs> because it's like you guys didn't believe in us. I told you guys, you stupid media type. He's looking straight at you. He's burning, yeah. he's burning holes in your, the back of your head with his eyes. I see it. I know it's coming this week. Oh, yeah. It, the thing is, is that being in a power conference like the Big 12 for BYU, who's not used to this world, they, it's no longer about style points. It's mm. just, you know, just get getting the win. the win. And because it used to be, well – he won thirty four to twenty eight, but you know, this team didn't do so oh, good yeah. and this team didn't do good so good. Right. And you didn't do good enough, so this is gonna probably ding you. That doesn't matter. No, you, just you know what? stack I, up it's, wins. It's it's a great point. I was actually watching one of the national shows who were doing they were doing the you know, their quick highlights and they're like, BYU we're off to an early lead pop. and they're talking about Jake Red Slap and, and and they showed the the, the, the throw to last or they the they showed the uh, the quarterback uh keeper on the touchdown and then they go but Baylor came storming back, but BYU held him. And that, that was like the end of it. That was just like, yeah. but BYU holds on and gets a win. And you're like, you know what? That's probably how you need to look at it. Like, that's it. Doesn't matter anything else. Baylor, who cares? You went down to their place and you played uh, an early morning game and you won it. And that's it. That's all that needs to happen. And I don't, like, like you were saying, I don't remember the last time BYU getting out to a uh, quick lead like that. All right, we'll take another break. We'll come back. We will listen to Kyle Whittingham and his reactions to this uh, loss to Arizona. Last night, a uh, bad one for the Utes, bad look, and uh, Arizona suddenly got life uh, in the pa- in the Big 12. So stay right here with us. More to go. It is first and 12. Mitch Harper, Alex Curie, stay with us.